Elke joins us. He is with ABC News trying to make some sense of these uh, polls. Good morning, Brad Melky. Hey, good morning. So they're all over the place. So this latest with this uh, with this Quinnipiac poll. So so what are we to believe? Well, so it's interesting. Seven out of the last eight polls have shown Hillary Clinton with a substantial lead. Now, the one yesterday from Quinnipiac shows Hillary Clinton with just a two-point lead. That's within the margin of error. ABC News had her with a 12-point lead over the weekend. So we were digging through the numbers and trying to figure out why the difference. And, and there's a, f- a few things to keep your eye on. They actually got somewhat similar results, but the numbers get interpreted slightly differently. Uh, so uh, Quinnipiac talked to about an equal number of Democrats and Republicans, which sounds logical. However, there are more Democrats in this country than there are Republicans. And so ABC News and a few of these other polling outlets have, have, have actually found they've been speaking to more Democrats, which actually is in line with the electorate. Secondly, when Quinnipiac talks to a, somebody at home and says, who are you going to vote for? If you say, I don't know, that's where it stays. You go into that undecided category. Well, then ABC and some other groups will say, well, who would you lean toward? And that group, that, those undecided voters, break overwhelmingly for Hillary Clinton, which, which I think is significant. Uh, so those are some of the differences that you're seeing. But if you ans- ask the same questions to the Quinnipiac guys that, that we did, you'd get the same numbers. And if they asked our, our people the same questions, they would have gotten the same numbers. So uh, the country, I think, is in a pretty consistent spot, which is a, a, a decent sized lead for Hillary Clinton, but still anything can happen. So, the, the, you know, it's, it, it's you only call a thousand or so people, and then, as you say, you, you write the formulas and so on and so forth. One of the big things is how many Democrats show up versus Republicans, but, but overall turnout is also a important part of that, uh, of that formula. Exactly, and that's what candidates are. That's what campaigns are looking towards right now. They might see these numbers and not necessarily think that if you're Donald Trump, that might not necessarily mean that you're out of this. This just means that you need to really mobilize that hardcore group of supporters and find ways to kind of turn off those Democrats that said, "I'm not sure. I might vote for Hillary Clinton, but I, I really don't care for her that much." Uh, and and that's the advantages and disadvantages that these campaigns are playing towards. So uh, the numbers end up being, you know, more or less the same. Uh, based Based on the, but it's the strategy of the campaigns that makes that big difference at the end. How are the different? And I don't know if you can answer this, but I've always been curious about this. How, how is each different polling apparatus dealing with cell phones versus landlines? Well, in the last several cycles, they've started to get better at this. And so now it's largely a mix between cell phones and landlines. In fact, more cell phones generally than landlines. And none of these major polling firms generally use any of the online polls because it's so sporadic who you end up getting, right? If it's, you get a lot of visitors to one website, then you're going to have a very skewed result. So it's generally a lot of cell phones, a few landlines, no Internet. Brad Melky, one more question here. The website 538 didn't necessarily put out a poll, but they put out a percentage, uh, which they, I guess they have Donald Trump at a 20% chance of winning the presidency. How does that mix with all these other polls? Well, so yeah, that takes into account all these polls. Plus, they, they, the, the whiz kids at 538 also use a bunch of other models, such as uh, the, those polling bumps that we always see after the conventions. They're going to be factoring things like that in. Uh, they're going to uh, take into account the economy. You know, when it's a bad economy, that's usually bad news for the incumbent party. All that uh, let them create a model for forecasting. And think of it like a weather forecast. Right now they're saying there's an 80% chance that Hillary Clinton wins. Uh, as we've seen, you know, that also means there's a 20% chance. That does not happen. So depending on how you hear that, it might sound like it's a very aggressive stance. Or I'm sure there's a lot of listeners who think Donald Trump doesn't even have a one in five chance of winning this thing. So <laughs> that's where that forecast is at right now. Brad Melke, have a good 4th of July. Thanks for checking in. All right, thank you. You got it. 625 here, Big Five.